Hello everyone, uh, welcome to Six Questions. Uh, today we are really, really happy to have uh, Mr. Arun Raj uh, with us from Curtin University, the Senior Student Engagement Coordinator uh, out of Perth in Australia. Uh, and we have just learned that there are two Perths in the world, uh, probably more, but uh, there's one in Scotland as well. Uh, but uh, we are uh, we have uh, Mr. Arun all the way from Australia. How's it going today, sir? Very good, pretty good, Abzin. Not bad. We just, uh, you know, I think we are the uh, only state in Australia at the moment that doesn't have a lockdown. So, or maybe besides the Northern Territory. So, yeah, we're doing life as normal and getting vaccinated, all that stuff. <laughs> very good, very good. Um, and we're really happy to have you on the show. Of course, uh, you know, Alanis, uh, six questions uh, is all about student engagement. Uh, it's mm -hmm. all about speaking about students and talking and sharing ideas uh, with the rest of the world and uh, people in your, uh, you know, people in your space. Um, so the first question that uh, we have for you and the first question that we ask everyone is, can you tell us a little bit about your professional journey leading up to this point? Not a problem, Mavzi. Um, so I've started, I started off, uh, I've, done, I've won a few different hats in, in my career so far leading up to my current uh, job and I still do a few of those things on the side so I've, I've been I've been trained formally as a software engineer that's from 97 those days in Singapore because I hail from Singapore and I've moved to Perth um, after not really enjoying life in that um, space it, it was a it was a difficult time because it, everything got cheaper and wages were stagnating um, and there was a lot of competition from uh, the likes of India and China uh, where people were outsourcing a lot of the jobs and so we weren't I wasn't getting a lot of I suppose quality uh, time life life wasn't um, great so uh, I had an opportunity to go to Perth to uh, further my studies and I went to Curtin which is where I got a job as well after four years studying mass communications and screen arts and I was lucky enough because of my skill sets in IT and you know um, my interest in creating videos um, that I was able to secure a job creating content for orientation so that was since 2011 um, and from, from that point onwards, I guess that skill set has bode well in my favor. And I've been able to use that skill set in terms of creating content and also thinking a little bit differently from people who probably did not have that experience um, with, you know, IT as well as um, video and content creation. Because a lot of the comms people might be, might have one particular skill, potentially writing copy or you know crafting a brief for an external yep. person to come in and create content for them um, however i was sort of a unicorn in that sense that i was able to do all those three three things three or four things together yep. i could see oh this is how the developers were going to create a bit of an app that might be able to engage students and i know what that process entailed i was also able to look at messages that people wanted to put across and say hey maybe we need to put this up front because students really care about the free stuff potentially you know yep. so just just having that skill set was really um brought me to a, a good stage uh where i was in demand at curtain and i think um yeah that's where i'm sitting at right now um where we try our best to use technology you know because of the state the world is in curtain is pretty um uh I suppose on the forefront of our satellite campuses as well, having uh, campuses in Dubai, um, you know, um, Mauritius, Sri Lanka, we've got a, a campus, well, a partner there, Singapore, Malaysia, um, and yeah, and I'm sure the, the, the arm is, is sort of sticking out, sticking out to other parts of the world as well. And most of our students are online as well. So we have got a large international cohort at Curtin, um, which is why probably my sort of background helps a lot in student engagement. And yeah, this is probably where I am right now. It's great that Curtin has you, uh, which is perfect. Um, so after uh, doing all that, and of course, uh, getting your education and, and, and living in Singapore and then coming to Australia, studying there, getting a job, uh, how does it finally feel to be interviewed by me? <laughs> it's just a conversation, isn't it, Abzi? <laughs> it's great. It's good to share and, and, and think and think and talk to like-minded individuals who have, I suppose, the same interests at heart. You know, we're, we're both 
um, really interested in how we can engage with our up and coming um, you know students as well as you know the, the leaders of tomorrow really that's what I like to call people we're talking to because you know after we go on the other ones are going to be um, carrying on the mantle so to speak so uh, thank you so much for that uh, Arun uh, now before we go into the second question uh, we're going to ask you to open up uh, the Alamus application uh, and go into the upcoming events and then you will see six questions so I need you to RSVP for the event scan it all right so scan it uh, yeah here you go there you go. Oh. all right perfect all right so question number two is uh, how do you ensure student voice uh, has a place in the events and courses that you organize yeah so student voice is extremely important for the way we um, promote run um, and, and and sort of um, yeah scale out the events that we that we organize so um, I, my, part of my job is a uh, program coordinator for the student consultative committee. Um, and this is 70 old students from the faculty of business and law. Um, and they are students who could be undergrads in their first year, all the way to postgrads in their third or fourth year doing their PhD. So it's a wide, broad audience. And what we do is we get these students to be representatives and, and use their voice to promote events, opportunities, um, we get testimonials, that sort of deal. So a lot of the time, we also get them to tell us how we can sharpen the saw, so how we can improve the product. Um, student consultative is basically that we meet twice a semester. So instead of just coming up with a problem, saying, hey, parking is too expensive, we'd be like, Come, come up with a solution for us. How can we help you? Can we provide a bus service? Um, so that's quite prominent in, in the way we do things. Also, Curtin has recently signed a memorandum of understanding with the Student Guild. So the Guild is pretty much like your student union. It bodes well um, that we are engaging more with the student voice. All right, uh, question number three. Uh, what are the methods uh, you use to collect student feedback? So we talked a little bit about student feedback, but how uh, do you, how do you, you know, how do you make sure that you can get uh, the most? What methods do you use? Yep. So we use students to collect our feedback, and, uh -huh. and then we use their feedback in a report. So we tell them, hey, these are the topics we want you to go and chat to your other students about. So as the representative of the student body. Um, or in, in the faculty of business and law, what they end up doing is having a chat with 20 other students. 20 to 100 students is our average of how many students each rep talks to. Um, and what they do is they come to us at a meeting. They tell us, hey Arun, hey Hannah, this is the issues that we have. Um, this is what student A said. So it's all confidential, but it all goes up to the higher um, management. So that's, that's how the, the SCC or the Student Consultative Committee works. Um, and it happens at each faculty. So each faculty is supposed to have an SCC at Curtin. Um, and so far it's running really well. And actually coincidentally, in the next couple of weeks, we're looking at how we can um, do this specifically for the MBA program. All right, so now that we're done with three questions, uh, it's time for the halftime break uh, and, and the halftime question. So this is a very, 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 very difficult question that we will be asking. Um, and uh, we will be uh, asking you to take out your application once again. So take out your phone again uh, and uh, you can enter in the Alamus Classroom 101. Uh, this is my classroom. I decide the rules. I decide the questions. I decide the answers. Um, I've always wanted to say that. All right. Uh, so now with it, uh, we can, uh, it should say attend lecture and then uh, there should say uh, show QR code. Yep. Okay, so not yet. No, no. Well, everyone does that. Not yet. You first have to answer the question and then we give you the points. Oh, Please. No, I thought you were going to attend the question. Is that to attend? Uh, I need to show you the QR code to attend it. Well, no, you, you need to. So as soon as you click on attend now, okay. uh, the timer starts and you actually get points for every second that you keep your phone okay. inside and attend the lecture. Uh, yep. Anyways. Your question for today, halftime, very, 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 very difficult question is, since you are tech oriented, we will ask you, when was Facebook formed? And you have four options, okay? Um, it was formed 
yesterday. It was formed last month. It was formed in 2020, or it was formed in 2004. That's really difficult. It is. It's always, uh, let me think about that one. Nah, it's February 2004, that's for sure. February 2004. Wow, you actually know the date as well. That is amazing. <laughs> Did you just Google I it? I just watched. No, I actually watched The Social Network recently. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. All right. So we're going to give you the They're points now. <laughs> yeah, we're going to give you the points. So if you want to show me your QR code now, then I can, sh I can actually give you your points for it. Yeah, yeah it's a bit uh, bright. Uh, that is fine. We'll give you the points. Yeah, that's good. Uh, don't worry about it. We'll give it to you right here. So um, the students can, uh, we can give you, we can give students through the camera, uh, or, yep. you know, online, or you could do it through the, uh, or the students can just, uh, if there's too many students, they can just request the points and the professor can add them later. Um, you know, we have multiple ways of getting uh, students their points and we see that they, they love it. I mean, on the, and it automatically updates. Um, so right now we can see that you have 100 academic points and you have 10 social points. Um, so that was, of course, for attending the event uh, and for answering the question. So it's constantly dynamically you know, evolving and students can follow their journey uh, through the university and, of course, uh, keep getting more points, not just for themselves, but for their houses like you have in Dragon. All right, question number four. Uh, what kind of content do you think attracts students when it comes to event marketing at your university? So, of course, you are the expert content creator. Uh, you're the best person to ask this question. I guess, um, again, it really depends on the type of event that we are running and, and what the nature is of the event is. So, we have a lot of online as well as face-to-face -face events um, at Curtin, um, due, just due to the pandemic and also the student cohort nature. A lot of the times we do um, it needs to be a, a campaign and not just a, one particular type of content that we that we often uh, if we have something that we really really want to push or like an event that's beneficial to the students and to us then we end up doing a campaign over weeks or months leading into the event so we do a little bit of an awareness push at the start of it and that's um, through a news campaign that goes up on their portal you know, it comes up as a little link. Hey, did you know that this is happening in August? Let's say we are in June. We say, you know, you might want to uh, click on this link and show an expression of interest or start registering now. And then there might be a calendar invite. And then later on, a couple of weeks later, so once the semester is sort of in full swing and maybe a couple of weeks away from the event, we might post a short video um, talking about what the benefits are and, you know, a reminder go register for this event because of this, this, this. We might have a few student testimonials in there, um, as well as um, one from a staff member who might be you know, a, a keynote speaker potentially of an event, let's say. Um, and then at the end of it, there's also um, probably the week before, we do a reminder to all those attending the event. Um, and also um, we might do a, a last push if we really need uh, people and we don't have enough numbers. So using that student voice again, um, that's the kind of content that we try and create rather than have a, a boring event this happening at this time, register here. We have a little bit of a story that goes with it. Uh, yeah, and so giving them, giving them incentives to show up is always, is always really, really good. Um, yeah. So now that we use, I mean, we talked about incentives, so the, it, it leads right for us to the next uh, you know, question as well. Uh, what are your thoughts on gamification and what role does technology play in the success of student engagement? Yeah. We have been trying to gamify a lot of our stuff for the longest time, but it's always about buy-in, isn't it? So um, we can try, we have been trying to gamify our screens, our touch screens, um, so that students will engage with other content and the, 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 the gamification touch helps them to, helps to lure them in. So it's that in sort of incentive, but uh, you know, when students walk past a cafe, for example, and there's a touch screen of a menu, with just like fish going around like a pond and it says touch to start and you touch a fish and it jumps up or something like that. We've done that in the past and that sort of helped some engagement in that context, but there's a lot of more that we can be done. So even with learning, for example, if you gamified a bit of, you know, a bit of a quiz at the end of it that gave you those points, like, you know, you guys are talking about, yep. um, that completely, you know, even if you are 
most disengaged, you might click on it just to see what it's like, yeah. I reckon. Um, yeah. And especially if it's so easy, it's on your phone. You don't, eliminating the, the steps that it takes to also interact is really useful. You know, instead of saying, hey, go to this particular page or that page, just the link yeah. within something they're already in. Yeah. Um, yeah. So question number six is, Having heard and seen what Alanis is, and I know you, you, I know what you're going to say about this already, uh, because you, you are a fan of gamification. I think it works really well. You know, we talked about incentiv- incentivization. We talked about the social aspect of, of student life. That um, you know, you've got you've got um, Instagram feeds as well, the hashtags and all that. It aggregates content. Um, it looks like something that is well thought out sort of system. It's got a bit of interest, so you have a bit of a preference center that you can build. Um, I don't see why it wouldn't work um, in, in any sort of area that's looking to to um, improve engagement or for for universities or institutions that don't have an app or app already or are looking for ways to to in, embed technology into not just the curriculum but also you know the social aspect of things looks like it's um it covers a lot of those it takes a lot of those boxes yeah absolutely yeah. And, and you know i mean even if uh most you know most of the universities uh, or colleges uh they do have their own uh, their own applications but ultimately they are information giving uh, apps yeah as opposed yeah. to interactive uh applications yeah. and uh, honestly it's just the same as you know a website right uh or you know to take your example the static screen uh, that was before, and now when the fishes are going, you want to sort of t- tap on them, and it increases student engagement. Um, as long as you can interact with something, right? Um, you know, it's uh, it's always better. Um, but uh, if you can't interact with it, if you can't sort of have those uh, your feedback or whatever you know, a gamified version that you can sort of get the information back from the students, then it usually does make it a bit static. Um, all right, perfect. So, thank you so much, uh, Arun, for being on uh, six questions with us. Uh, there is uh, one last thing I will ask you to do is to open up your application. Once again, uh, yep. there is a section for upcoming polls, uh, which I need you to fill out. Uh, the results of this poll go directly to my daughter. I have to make her proud. Um, yep. She checks every single oh, yeah. Uh, she checks it. Okay. This interview, how do you yeah. like the interview? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Papa, how was your interview today? I was I was good, I was good. Show me your rating. Yes, um, here it is. Uh, I, Papa did good today. Uh, I'm just kidding, she's, she's two and a half. She, she's, she's not, um, she, she can't bully me yet, but well, who am I kidding, she already does. Uh, she went house already. <laughs> uh, she bullies everyone. Anyways, yeah. uh, thank you so much uh, for being on the show, uh, and uh, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts on you know student engagement, content creation. Uh, I know a lot of uh, universities are looking for um, content creators, or uh, even uh, how to do content creation. I think it's, it is a big uh, buzzword and, and, and topic in today's day. Yep. So thank you so much for sharing your thoughts on it.